I'm not a huge fan of making predictions, but this time I'm going to make an exception and I'm going to go early. If Mayanka Yadav, not Agarwal, <laughs> oops, there's a slip of a tongue, um, but if Mayank Yadav can stay fit for IPL 2024, I am predicting that Lucknow Super Giants will not only make the playoffs, but they will also have a great shot at winning the title for the very first time. Sarvesh, your thoughts on my prediction? I, I don't know about <laughs> I don't know about that far, but I think he's a very good prospect. I think the good thing about him is that uh, he's not just bowling at pace. But he's also bowling very good lines and that is also important. Uh, I was listening to Mulli Jaran uh, on one of the podcasts that he, he explained that it is not just about bowling at 150, 155, but it is also about bowling those critical lines, bowling that line and line and uh, swinging the ball and everything. I think Mayank Yadav is somebody who looks like has got uh, all of those uh, ingredients in, uh, with him. So I think you know he's a, he's a very good prospect and I hope he remains fit. Today I saw him uh, after that spell, he was uh, stretching a bit. He went inside and he was getting some stretches. I hope it's, it's just uh, routine stretches that he was getting. But if he remains fit, you never know, they can, they can go all the way. We will definitely spend a bit more time talking about Mayan Kyadav today. But before that, let's have a look at what happened in Bengaluru. Second game in a row, the Royal Challengers Bengaluru playing at home got ousted by the visiting team. Last time it was KKR. This time, it was LSG. Batting first, LSG making 181 for 5 in their 20 overs, which in Bengaluru at the Chinnaswamy Stadium is about par. You know, we've seen teams lose with 180 on the board there. Um, Quinton de Kock top scoring 81 of 56 deliveries. Uh, and then he got the support he needed from Nicholas Puran, a bit from Marcus Stoinis, a good start by KL Rahul there. But finishing with 181 for 5, RCB in reply falling well short, 28 runs, the margin of defeat for them. Um, and chasing 182, top score of only 33 by Mahipal Lomroor, who came in at number 8, I think it was. Um, so, seven, think, yeah. too little, number mm. 7 or number 8, too little, too late, um, and just nothing going right for them with the bat and not a great start with the ball. Um, Sarvesh, one of the biggest questions we had at the start of this IPL was the form of Quinton de Kock. Clearly, the time he spent at the crease in their last game definitely helping him. And today, we just saw him step up that gear and, and take his IPL 2024 into the next level. Yes, uh, there were question marks on Quinton de Kock's form. But he has played so many seasons uh, in IPL that I think he now realizes what he needs to do. And LSG is also a setup where uh, a setup where they, there is not a. Uh, I mean, there is of course Kyle Mays setting out, but Quinton de Kock knows his role pretty well. So it's not that his role is dynamic; it's, it's changing every other game. So he knows the role. So I think uh, de Kock coming coming in form was a was 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 a huge plus for LSG. And he's he's just uh, cont he's just uh, continuing to you know score good runs. And let's not forget Quinton Dingo went back. He he used to play for RCB for I think one or two seasons. So I think he now he went back there. I think he had uh, he perhaps had a good idea of what was going to happen. So I think you know the he used those conditions pretty well. Uh, I think uh, I I felt that at the start he was going well. Then uh, then in the middle phase I think he slowed down a bit. But again uh, at the back end. Yeah, I, th I felt he, uh, he again slowed down, but again he d then ca caught up. So I think it was a very difficult, uh, very different kind of an innings that he, he played. But, uh, but moreover, I think he got those important runs, 81 runs. And out of 181, 81 were scored by Quentin de Kock. And I think he took exactly, uh, I mean, the strike rate is not that, uh, not that huge, but I think you know, somebody, had to, somebody had to play on. Because when you look at Asibis innings, nobody stayed at the crease for more than like 4-5 overs. So Quentin de Kock, Playing through, playing, uh, playing till the end, I think that that made some difference, and you know others could just come in and other, uh, could play their shots. Stoin is getting a quick fire, 24. St Nicholas Puran getting those uh, quick 40 runs. So I think you know it was that kind of a wicket. I don't think it was a very, it was a typical Chinnaswamy wicket where we st where we where we normally see a, a free flowing, a, a free stroke making and. Uh, 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 180, 190 runs getting uh, chased easily because I listened to Glenn Maxwell at uh, after the innings break and I think he said 
then you know, it's not going to be that easy they will have to bat really well because there was something in the pitch he clearly said that you know that was one of the clues that i got that you know this is not a typical wicket and also i uh, i noticed one more thing in last three overs uh, rcb bowled nine dot balls now you don't often see nine dot balls getting bowled in last three overs but despite that lsg scored five sixes and one four so i think it was it was uh, i think pomi engbangwa mentioned this in the second innings uh, at the end of second innings that it was either z- either a zero either dot ball or either six so it was that kind of a very strange wicket i felt so quinton digo again i think he did his job yeah uh, just looking at that rcb bowling performance though yeah. um i got the feeling that you know the chinnaswamy stadium is their home ground they have they play all their cricket here but do the rcb bowlers actually have they figured out what are the right lengths and and lines to bowl at, at the chinnaswamy you just get the feeling that they're clueless especially in those opening overs when all those boundaries came along um you just got the feeling that they had no plan they had no strategy and they didn't execute anything i think i uh, we were discussing this uh, uh, during when the match was on that why vaishak was not playing you know that is one of the questions uh because he he looked like uh, he looked like a very uh, promising uh, i mean we know what he can do but he looked like uh, that he had solutions for rcb's middle innings uh, issues because they only have one spinner in uh, full time spinner in mayank dagger and then they have glen maxwell now in some of the games glen maxwell could uh, he may not complete his full quota so that's why you need somebody to control that middle over space and vaishak did it pretty well so that selection criteria was again i don't know wh- what went wrong there but uh, you rightly said i don't know if they if, if they had any plan i first i felt that you know they had something uh, they were bow- bowling those wide yorkers and if you see if you go back to that quinton nickock innings then you will realize that quinton nickock actually missed out on a lot of those uh, wide yorkers he was not able to time them so i felt you know they had some plan but you know there was always that loose delivery after every uh, after after all those uh, good deliveries three four good deliveries there was always that one loose delivery that's where uh they considered those sixes as well so you rightly pointed out i don't know if they had a clear clear uh, clear uh, plan set for uh, on like on how like how to bowl on this wicket because even in the last game we saw what happened now again today it's the same story you mentioned vijay kumar vishak um, obviously the best bowler on display in their last game doesn't get a place in the side um they've changed Alzari Joseph they yeah. brought in Reece Topley um but Reece Topley obviously playing his first game in the IPL and playing cricket after a a pretty long time yeah. um so you could see that he was a bit rusty so hopefully as the tournament goes on you know you might see him get better and better um Maxwell giving you 2 for 23 in his four overs an absolute bonus but in some of their previous games they didn't even bowl him yeah I think you know, yeah there I, have been yeah. games in the past where they haven't bowled him. Um yes Dayal continues his form. He's given you 1 for 24 from his four overs. But the real question mark and the crux of it all is your part-timers have gone for about 48 in their four overs and Mohammad Siraj has gone for 47. You would expect more from your premier india fast bowler to kind of step up um and show the way rather than it being the other way around exactly i mean when you said that why we, uh, when uh, when we were chatting you said that uh, vaishak should play and my counter argument was then who should go out because just dayal is doing very well even today uh, at the start he was good and at the back end he was i think exceptional because he is not known for those kind of uh, those uh, death overs but he did pretty well today he i think uh, considered only seven or eight runs in his last two overs so that's a very good returns on somebody like from somebody like just there so i think he did his job glen maxwell uh, like you mentioned uh, part timer but he still did his job but i think rees topley again you said first game i completely agree with that as well uh, mayank dagger whatever opportunities that he get, that he gets he does his part cameron gin we, we don't expect we don't really expect him to bowl his full quota or, or bowl those overs in a very economical manner so you know the last last piece of uh, this puzzle is mohammad siraj i think he has been playing for us like for for number of years now and if uh, i mean he is somebody you know you expect that he will lead that rcb bowling attack and you know th- that every time something happens rcb they have this uh, mohammad siraj as their as their main man 
and if it is not coming from him then i think you will have to then go and look at uh, other bowlers other overseas bowlers who are not who have not spent that much of time at the stadium because uh, you know if you if you listen to yudhish chahal's uh, all those interviews he will say that you know it's not easy bowling uh, at this, at, at chennai for me so mohammad siraj is somebody who has got the experience of bowling there but if he is not able to deliver then i think there is something wrong i think you know he needs to uh you know uh, do something about it he, because rcb need him uh, need him you know uh, in in his peak form and again t20 world cup coming up and you know all eyes will be on those fast bowlers there are plenty plenty of contenders now coming up like mayank yadav so you know you i think he'll have to uh he'll have to do better lot better in the next few games i think the question to be asked is what is my best 11 on reputation and what is my best 11 on current form and then the answer to that will tell you what is the level you need to go with we spoke about this and about this impact sub thing that go with your best 11 and then the impact sub should be an addition it's like you know you go with all the ingredients basic ingredients and the impact sub should be like the saffron you you have on top of it to just kind of enhance the flavor yeah. but um I think RCB have a few soul searching questions to ask themselves because if you look at the batting they've not got anything from Faf Duplessis yet they've not got anything much from Cameron Green yet yeah. and they've not got a whole lot from Rajat Patidar yet yeah. they've not got a whole lot from Glenn Maxwell yet with the bat yeah. now all these four on reputation make it to your reputation 11 but do they make it to your current form 11 absolutely they don't now these are also the perils of having an overseas player as your captain because the four overseas player that you are allowed are absolutely like gold dust you want to make sure that you know you pick the ones and who are going to deliver but you have a captain who in the last four games has not carrying his weight in the team but you have to play him because he is captain if it was anybody else and had four failures like we saw with alzari joseph he's not captain he didn't perform well he's been replaced with reece topley today you know and if reece topley doesn't do well he'll be replaced with lockie ferguson but you cannot do that with faf duplessis right now because he's your captain i don't think faf duplessis would have got dropped you know even if uh, even if he was uh, not captain because i think faf duplessis is somebody who uh, you expect to will support virat at the top so i think he's that kind of a player for them so i am not sure uh, i'm not completely sure if he, if uh, they had uh, if they would have dropped him had his form uh, continued like this if he, if, he was, if he was not captaining the side so i think that's one point and i think uh, uh, we have seen this with, uh, seen this with uh, with faf uh, he has done this in the past you know he will suddenly start getting those runs and then he'll uh, go on and you know win matches on his own so is that kind of a player i think is it's not uh, yet coming out this season as because we spoke about this la in the in a preview that you know last time they had just virat faf glen maxwell and they did not even have anuj uh, they did not even have rajat patidar fit they did not have cameron green available so despite that these three four guys they carried the carried this team beautifully last season they almost took them to to the knockouts so i think it was working from all of them and now now it is suddenly not working for any of them so you know that it's that kind of a story where you know they were getting runs together and now they are not getting runs together so it's that correlation of get not getting runs together it's it's very high with these uh, three four batters and i think you know this is something they will have to figure out because somebody some, one of them at least will have to go and you know make a good 50 60 in, in all the games and glen maxwell again today uh, we saw him at number 4 uh, i don't know if you know maybe uh, so they are they, they are playing around a bit with you mentioned this that uh, you know something is about some about your body so i wanted to ask you this question you mentioned about cameron green and his batting position so what do you think so do you think uh, he had a, a case where he could have come up at number 3 absolutely i mean look um we spoke about tim david being shielded the other day yeah um i get the feeling that because the spinners were on in the power play and lsg started with both left arm spinners i think they kind of held um, cameron green back for that reason um but look he is a big strong batter uh, who can clear any field you know especially in the power play when the field is up um, it is very easy for him to kind of hit over the field and get you boundaries um more than whether what he can do i think it's also giving the player the stability of a position because 
his role is not clearly defined. That just tells me that his role is not clearly defined in this team. Because he's batted at number 5 to start with. Then he was pushed up to number 3. He batted 2 innings at number 3. And today he's back to number 5. Which means there is a bit of a muddled kind of um, decision-making going on about how best we can use him. But someone who's coming new into your franchise and who's never played for you before, all he wants is a bit of stability and a bit of clarity. This is your role. You're going to do this for 14 games. Go out and do it. And that's the kind of um, attitude you need. The other thing, I think, is also the fact that because Rajat Patidar is struggling, they kind of... And the spinners were on and they thought this is the best time for him to bat because he's really good against the spinners. So let's push him up the order. Um, but that didn't come off either because in a run chase of 180, if Rajat Patidar at number 3 is giving you 29 from 21 deliveries, um, that's not really cutting the mustard. Now, he's got two sixes and two fours, which shows me that you know 20 of those 29 runs came in four balls. Yeah. 17 of those deliveries, yeah. he's not been able to kind of, you know, where are the signals in that in that inning, you know, rotation of strike. There's nothing happening there. So, uh, there's a lot of issue there. I think Kohli not getting runs uh, and, and look, he's had a fantastic IPL so far. So, he was due uh, a not so good inning. Even in that 22, he looked really good today. Um, but uh, as soon as he doesn't get runs, Faf is out of form, Patida out of form, Maxwell's not given you anything. You've got three batters there who are just sitting ducks and are not giving you much. Then suddenly Cameron Game comes in, but he's under tremendous pressure at that time because you lost three wickets, you're behind the asking rate, and then you're leaving just too much for your tail to do. Still doesn't explain how Anuj Rawat gets away with 11 of 21 balls in 181 runches. Um, but, uh, yeah, just things like that make absolute n- no sense. I mean, Mahipal Lomroor coming towards the end and giving you 33 of 13 is an absolute bonus, you know. And that's my thing also, that with the kind of form that he's shown in a couple of run changes now, he's got to be one of the first names on that batting sheet because on current form, he is one of your best batters, you know. Uh, move aside uh, Rajat Patidar, move aside Anuj Rawat, if you're comparing him with Indian batters, because on current form, Maipal Lomroor should walk into that side and not be an impact sub. And I know it doesn't change what he does in the game, but it's just the mindset wherein the player gets the feeling, actually, I'm part of the first 11, I'm not an impact sub, because an impact sub has the connotation of being an afterthought. Because depending on the game situation, we'll either bring you in or we won't bring you in. Whereas, when you are in the first 11, you know, I've got a role, I've got clarity, and I'm going to do something about it. Um, look, at the end of the day, you know, it's been, what, 16 years now, and they've just got one trophy to show for it, which the woman won for them. Um, but this sort of muddled thinking, we've seen it before from RCB also. You know, it's not the first season, so I'm not surprised, but it is disappointing because uh, they've got the... They've got the players who can do it. Uh, but And I, I say this very often, in this day and age, it's fine to lose a game on the field to a better opposition, but it's not fine to win a game even before a ball is bowled because of poor selection and because of poor strategy. You cannot let that happen. I think Rajat and my, uh, Rajat and an, uh, Anuj Rawat's numbers, they look bad on paper. Anuj Rawat, 11 from 21, is not justified in a big run chase. But I think... Uh, we'll have to also consider the fact that Mayank Yadav was bowling. Uh, he was he, he was uh, bowling like he was unplayable. I don't think there were a lot of deliveries these guys faced. You know, uh, I read a stat that uh, I'll have to confirm this. I I don't know if it is true, but I think it it must be somewhere around that. So so I I read that uh, he has now bowled most number of 155 plus deliveries. Now I'll have to go and check this, but I think if he has really, I mean. In 155 plus deliveries and he hasn't even bowled 50 deliveries in IPL yet. So you know, That tells you the kind of talent that he has. And I think Anuj and Rajat, they you know, got, got stuck in between that, uh, in between that uh, great spell from Mayank. So I think their numbers look bad. Rajat stood there and he, you know, he just uh, he, uh, played uh, extra overs after that spell. I think Anuj Rawat could not continue. So I think that's where Rajat uh, made up for those lost deliveries. But I think again, uh, do you have to find answers like you said? You know, this this has been going on for a while. And I think you you will have to find answers from somewhere. You'll have to get the right people, 
at right number you'll have to select the right number right right uh, batters in your in, in your 11 and not just uh, get them in as impact subs so i think there is a lot of uh, there are a lot of changes rec- uh, that that require and i think if you look down at uh, mohammad siraj those two sixes actually they made a lot of difference i mean 150 they they wouldn't have crossed 150 as well you know this would have looked like a yep. huge loss so i think they should thank mohammad siraj for those uh, uh, those sixes at the back end but overall i think you know uh, yeah. It, it was it wasn't wasn't good. I mean, I you could see that from the faces of the RCB fans in the crowd. They were they had that disappointment on their face, and I could compare that this disappointment with yesterday's match where you know Mumbai Indians they, their fans they looked exactly exact same expressions. They were they were shocked. They did not know what to expect. Just wickets were falling one after another, and they had just no answer. So I think you know it, it was that kind of a day. Yeah. Look, I agree that uh, Mayank Yadav bowled a dream spell. I mean, it was very difficult to play him and all of those things uh, are there. But guess what? That is what opposition bowlers are going to do. Yeah. They are going to try their best to, you know, stop you from scoring runs. You, the onus is on you to find ways to do it. There are bowling machines that you can set up to 160 kilometers an hour if you want to try and learn how to play yeah. that kind of pace. And I know doing it against a bowling machine in the nets and doing it in the match situation is different. But... Uh, that can be an example, but it cannot be an excuse, you know. Um, anyway, let's talk about the brightest spot about this game because I think <laughs> I've kind of wasted all my energies talking about a whole lot of negatives about RCB. What a brilliant, brilliant second showing by Mayank Yadav. I mean, 3 for 14 in 182 run chase from 4 overs. Yeah. Um, we've just found a gem, haven't we? Because um, there's been no hype about him. We did speak about him a little bit in our preview, uh, but there's been no hype about him coming into this tournament. And, uh, you know, trust the Delhi Cricket Association because they're known for um, a lot of things that are unmentionable on this podcast. Uh, but... Um, it's bowling us 155 kilometers an hour. Every single delivery playing for your state. And nobody knows about it. Um, so they have managed to keep that secret quite well. Um, what do you think makes him different though? Look, Umran Malik also is capable of bowling the same speeds. I have a theory and I want to confirm this with you. Um, I want a theory that because he is taller, pace at that height is a match made in heaven. Isn't it? The thing is, uh, uh, the thing with Mayank Yadav is his, his action, his it, his action looks like a very normal action, you know, it, uh, normally you see uh, all those fast bowlers, they have different kind of mechanics, you know, they stretch their, uh, their, this, uh, the, they stretch their body a bit, you, you could see that they are, they are taking that extra effort, but his action looks so normal, I mean, he, he runs in, he bowls normally, and uh, you, until you, you know, you look at uh, Pata's reaction or that uh, speedometer, you may, you may not realize that he has bowled that kind of a delivery, so it's so smooth, and it's so natural, you know, it feels like a normal bowler, normal 140, 135, 140 bowler is bowling. So I think that's one positive with him. So I think he has more control over his line and length. I, I saw his, uh, because you just cannot, uh, at international level or uh, or at IPL level, where international players are playing, or the cream of domestic players are playing, you cannot just beat them with, with, with raw pace. You have to have something extra as well. And the way Mayank is bowling, he's actually looking, uh, you know, actually looking, he's actually looking unplayable. Those batters are not able to figure out uh, what to do against his bowling. So that tells you that he, it's not just pace, it's something else as well. And I think his lines, you know, the lengths that he's bowling, I think, you know, he's got everything. He has got the, he's, it's the entire package. And I hope, you know, he keeps, keeps, keeps on developing because I think he's still raw and he'll, he'll keep improving. So I think that's my reading. He has that uh, line and length sorted out. When you can bowl that fast and you've got your direction right, you don't need many uh, variations, do you? I mean, you can just run and bowl six balls at 155 mm-hmm. and, and that's good enough. I think the thing that stands out for me is that one ball which he bowls, which is just back of a length, but because of his height, he gets it to rise mm-hmm. so much and it comes so quick onto the bat. And the number of batters who've got out playing the pull shot yeah. to him because they've been late on the shot um, is quite phenomenal. And in um, international batters, Glenn Maxwell, I mean, you expect you, these guys have played all those great yeah. fast bowlers back home and you know, in IPL as well. So I think it's it's credit to Mayank Yadav, the way he has bowled. 
he bowled an absolute peach to Cameron Green. Yeah. I mean, uh, Cameron Green is a Perth boy. You know, he's a Wacker boy. Um, grown up in Western Australia, used to playing pace and bounce. Um, regularly plays fast bowlers who bowl in the 140s, 150s. Um, but he beat him for pace, you know, and um, with that little bit of shape away. So, absolute dream delivery. That's a um, very good point. I mean, if somebody is, has uh, played his, a lot of cricket at Wacker, and if you're managing to beat that batter uh, with pace, then I think like you rightly pointed out, it's a great point, you know, then something has to be uh, special with that with that bowler. Yeah. I uh, heard a couple of commentators on air saying, you know, he's got to be on that flight to the USA and West Indies. Uh, but time will tell. Yeah. All we can do is hope that it continues. A um, couple of things that LSG did really well, and I like this out-of-the-box thinking. They started with two spinners, both left-armers, because obviously the matchups with Virat Kohli especially, and even to some extent with Faf Duplessis, yeah. Yeah. Um, they got that spot on, didn't they? Absolutely. And they both are different kind of a bowlers. Manivaram Siddharth, if you look at uh, his pace, he was bowling from 90 km per hour to 111, 112 km per hour. So, that, that 22 km range is not very common for a spinner. Normally, you see left-arm spinners bowling uh, in those uh, mid-80s and they go till mid-90s. So, the range is somewhere around uh, that 10, 50, 10 to 12, 13 km. That's it. But he was going beyond those 20 kilometers, so that was his range. And he was also getting that ball to nip in, that, you know, that uh, typical in-swinging kind of a delivery that he b bowled at 110, 112 kilometers per hour. So, I think he had the variations as well. Then I think he was mixing it up with that, uh, with, with 92, 93 kilometers per hour, those uh, finger spinners. So, I think he had the mixture, he had the in-swinger coming in. So, I think, you know, they both, both the batters, they took one over to figure out what's going on. And I think, you know, once uh, once Virat, I think he, he even scored a boundary against him. So, I think he figured out what what's ex what exactly is happening. So, after that, they brought Naveen. And I think, you know, uh, but I think Mani Maram Siddharth, he did his job. Uh, even Krunal, he considered 10 runs in that over. But I think that at the start, they were, you know, they just kept the, these guys in control. At, I think at, a, at the end of three overs, RCB would have, li would have loved to go to 35-40. Go to but they didn't even cross to 30. So, you know, that, that, that was the kind of pressure that the LSG created from the, from the beginning. And an honourable mention to Naveen ul -Haq also, because he's bowled almost four overs, yeah. two for 25, uh, on a track where some of the RCB quicks have um, struggled. Uh, Free Stop Lee struggled and uh, so did Mohamed Siraj. So, just showing that um, there is a way yeah. to adapt and there is a way to bowl on these wickets. Um, LSG are looking good. I mean... Two wins yeah. from three games, um, and uh, suddenly they found this guy who can uh, run through sides and uh, really pick up wickets whenever on demand. So, uh, as I said, I w I'm going early. I'm saying that if Mayank Yadav remains fit, I see them in playoffs contention for sure. And who knows um, if they get there, then that title might just be in their reach. On fourth position right now, as yeah. we said, um, two wins from three games. Um, and you have a lovely um, a statement that you made about the last two teams <laughs> on that league table. Tell me about that, Sarvesh. So, <laughs> so the two teams who were involved in that uh, in that the transfer uh, that much talked about transfer of Hardik Pandya from Gujarat to Mumbai Indians. Two teams played critical roles. First, Mumbai Indians who got Hardik from Gujarat. And then to make way for to, then to, to make that budget for, for for Hardik, you know, to to get him in that eleven, they had to free some budget. So to free the that kind of a money, they had to uh, they had to uh, send Cameron Green from Mumbai to RCB, and RCB basically brought him uh, to their squad for around seventeen and a half crores. And so now both these two uh, the, both these teams, you'll realize that they are at the bottom of the table. So I think. People were saying, fans were saying that, you know, they are not exactly happy with the way things have gone in, in the auction. But I think, uh, you know, uh, with RCB, I think that 17.5 crores spent on Cameron Green, they might think that, okay, I think uh, they could have probably spent that money on, on, a, on a bowler, on a strike bowler maybe. We could have given them, uh, given them a proper edge in chases like this. So I think, you know, those two teams, Mumbai and Bangalore, they are, they are struggling. Though those, they, they took... Uh, I mean, of course, Mumbai knew about Hardik and uh, Cameron Green had a great season last uh, last time with Mumbai. So people uh, they were knew, they they were aware those these two teams were aware that what's what they're going to get. But you know something has not worked out, and I think you know it's it's it may not be a surprise that these two teams are at the bottom. 
so i think <laughs> i don't know i find it could be just a coincidence <laughs> yeah it's it's coming to crunch time for both those sides uh, none of them in action tomorrow tomorrow we've got kolkata night riders taking on the delhi capitals delhi capitals obviously winning their first game in the last one kolkata coming off a win against bengaluru in their last game it's going to be exciting it's going to be um it's going to be quite interesting to see whether kolkata can maintain uh, that position on the leaderboard as well we'll be back with you tomorrow that's all that we have for you today Uh, match number 15 lsg picking up the points rcb left with a lot of questions that they need to find answers for until next time keep watching keep liking keep sharing keep subscribing and keep giving us your comments and feedback it we love bringing this to you and we'll keep doing it for the rest of the ipl thank you so much